I might have a confession to make to you guys. You see, I've been uh, running on uh, 48 kilohertz for a pretty long time now, actually. And I know that this might surprise you, but let me explain why. So, the sample rate discussion. Should you go higher than 48 kilohertz or not? That's the main discussion that has, well, been going on since audio could be sampled at a higher sample rate. And what I have been discovering throughout the last few years is that there are actually two places where sample rate really matters. And the first one is ADDA conversion, analog to digital, digital to analog, that's what ADDA stands for, and processing and they are hugely different from each other. Now let's start with ADDA. And if you have, well, I think almost any off the shelf uh, converter interface, however you want to call them, uh, on the market right now is capable of accurately sampling, well, all the frequencies that we can hear and uh, reproducing them as well um, on the output again. And this is being made very obvious in a video that is already a, a long time on YouTube, but a lot of people know it. Uh, I'll link it over here. It's a great explanation of why you do not need a higher sampling rate on your converters. Now I use 48 kilohertz instead of 44.1, and that is because it gives a little bit more room for an anti-aliasing filter. And that difference is pretty easy to explain. So uh, that's why 48 kilohertz is, is what I'm running at on the ADDA converter. Now most converters can run on 96 or 192 kilohertz and that's a bigger bandwidth. And although we cannot hear the frequencies that it samples then, um, why not do it? It's more, it's better, it's, it couldn't hurt, right? Well, wrong. What you see, and this is most of all happens in the cheaper converters or the older converters, they, well, as I call it, cannot keep up. And what this will cause is that it will actually sound worse when you're running in a higher sample rate. And I've linked a great article about this uh, in the description below. You should read it and there are actually some tests in there as well, which you can do with your own converter. So you can clock your own uh, system on 192 kilohertz and then check if it actually works. It, it's like a certain uh, sound that you play back and if you hear silence, your converter can do it. And if you hear a lot of rumble and stuff, well, that is what it is being adding when you're running at a higher sampling rate. So a very interesting thing. I did run at 192 kilohertz for a long time in the studio actually. And what I've seen is that the software support isn't really great on that level. I mean, all audio production stuff can really run at 192, but I also like to listen to like music on Tidal. I like to edit video. Um, I, do, I do a lot of different stuff and running on 192 gives some problems in that. Switching it on AVB and like clocking everything again, it's, it's a lot of hassle. So from that perspective as well, it is way better to run on 48 kilohertz. And uh, yeah, if it doesn't make any difference in the sound, then why uh, create the hassle? Now, where higher sample rates do actually matter is in processing. You know, a thing that becomes really important when processing audio in the box is something called aliasing. Now, I do not want to go into depth about aliasing uh, right now, but I made a video about this one or two years ago, I don't know. I'll link it in the corner over here. Check that video out first if you if you don't fully know what aliasing is about. But there are right now multiple ways that I am uh, working around this problem. That's well, not really working around it, but yeah. Um, but they all have to do with oversampling. Now, the easiest way to do this is by just enabling this in your plugin. So for instance, in the, in the Pro L, you can set an oversampling amount. Now, not all plugins do have an oversampling button. Some plugins do not have them because it doesn't make any sense to oversample. Other plugins do not have them because the developer didn't make it. Now, well, let's just say that, that this button doesn't exist in the Pro L. What I then need to do is first of all, set uh, a project setting here and set my project sample rate to 192. Now, what this basically does is telling Reaper like, hey, everything that you do in this session needs to happen at 192, all processing that you do. This doesn't include real-time processing. So when I play back right now, like this, it plays it back at 48 because that is what my interface is at. Now, what I can do is I can freeze the track. So if I press freeze, 
it's freezing it at 192 kilohertz. So it's it's taking up that extra space, that extra bandwidth, and it outputs a 192 kilohertz file that is then being downsampled to 48, uh, but with the proper filtering. So we don't have that that crap that is coming in. Uh, otherwise from a foldback distortion. That was the word, foldback distortion. Now, another way that I can do is, uh, again, having set the project setting to, to 192 is uh, while rendering, I can uh, render this uh, to 48 or 44.1 because 44.1 is most of the times the delivery sample rate. And then tick the box, use project sample rate for mixing and FX processing. If you do that, then it's, processing again on 192 and taking care of most of the foldback distortion and outputting a 44.1 usable file that should give like all the frequencies and all the quality that you have. Now resample mode, I always set it to extreme high Q, uh, high quality. I don't really know what the difference is of these. I did read an article about it and it basically said that everything from good should be unhearable, but don't quote me on that. Uh, and if you guys have some cool literature about that, please link it in the comments below. So that is my current setup when it comes to sample rates. And I really run the sample rate needed for the application. So again, ADDA, I run 48. And uh, in the DAW, it depends on, on what I'm actually doing. And there's one small story that I like to tell when uh, ending here. And that is a project that I did with a client. One of my clients uh, did send me his mixes for mastering and he was using some very, well, very cool distortion and very cool uh, sound design as an overall thing that he used on separate channels in the mix and, and on the vocal and that kind of stuff. It was a really great idea. But when I played it back over here, it Although it was a great idea, it sounded very restless. It sounded very grainy and not very defined. And I couldn't really find it. So what I did just to try it out uh, together with my client, I asked him like, hey, can you set your project to 192 kilohertz and then send me all the files in 192 kilohertz. So this was a lot of hassle for my client because it, it asked a lot of his system. I, I mean, you're, you're exporting four times more data. Uh, your CPU has to work four times harder. Uh, I, I think even harder than four times. Anyway, doesn't matter. But he sent me the 192 kilohertz files. And uh, what I did with those files is, well, I kept them 192, but Reaper uh, puts an uh, aliasing filter on there and then samples them back to 48. I really did a lot of AB testing on it. And when I used those files, it sounded way better. It was way more defined. Uh, there was uh, some kind of Zen in the audio, although it wasn't really Zen music, but I just like the sound way better coming from those 192 files. And, and that was really proving my point when it comes to processing audio on 192 or maybe even higher, but if you go higher than that, it's not really a standard. Yeah, well, it is a standard, but it's not a widely support standard anymore. Anyway, so yeah, that's all that I have to share with you guys today about sample rights. I really like to hear what you guys think of this uh, down below. And what I've learned throughout the years is that there are a lot of different perspectives when it comes to audio. Now, if you like my videos, like the studio, and uh, want to support me, then that is possible by uh, getting a t-shirt like this or some other merchandise. It's all linked down uh, below. Uh, you can also click the affiliate link and buy something and I'll get a little bit uh, from your purchase. And you're not paying anything extra, so that's really cool. If you like early access to my videos and uh, like to join the fan club on Patreon, you can do that uh, over here. I'll link Patreon over here, so check it out over here. Now, if you want to watch more videos, then don't forget to subscribe. I'll link one video over here. And uh, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing and bye-bye.